Guess what? Same thing as all the other times. And I should basically be there by now. What else is new? Um, we can talk on the way, I think. It's 10 o'clock, but the sun is kind of weird. I don't know. I guess that's what... No, the sun should definitely be up most of the way by now. Well, I guess it is up most of the way by now, but... It feels, it feels earlier in the morning. There it is. Um, I crashed. Well, it's... Okay. I guess, um... The last two days were mostly just blown. Uh, just kind of awake and then fall asleep and awake and then fall asleep. I slept in shifts and I tend to be unproductive when that happens because I can't stay awake long enough to finish anything. Um, that little chunk was blown on editing related things, um, which I think I'm mostly caught up on now. Um, let me have a few minutes worth of stuff when I get home. Um, where am I going? I'm going to the doctor um, to uh, talk about the things. Um, three discussions we need to have today. One of them is about blood test. Um, the second one is about testicle removing. And the third one is about the... Uh, oh shit, I forgot my... Uh, I forgot my uh, CD. That's okay. Um, I'll come back and get it later. Or, uh... Well, I've, I've got the appointment with the ear doctor on Thursday, so... I guess I'm gonna have to wait it out anyways. Um... I slept in a little bit. Um, because I... I guess I actually... I, I didn't... The first actual good sleep, I guess, was this, was this morning. I fell asleep around 2. Um, and I was up around 8. Um, my whole morning plan revolved around waking up earlier than that. What time, I didn't know, right? I woke up at 5, 6, something like that. Um, I was intending to shower before I came. I said I'm actually still wearing the same thing I wore to, uh, to Lansing the other day. I just kind of got up, shaved, and stumbled out. Um, it's close to 10. The appointment's at 10. Um, It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the face, the hair, specifically. It takes a long time, <laughs> maybe, to, to make myself presentable. Um, this is partly why I'm getting, well, this is a, a big part of the reason why I want my testicles out. Um, if I get the hair down, that's, uh, it needs to be the next step. Um, like I say, as I pointed a few times, um, I can keep, you know, boosting my testosterone suppressors. Eventually, like, like my liver's got to deal with this, right? It goes through your liver. Eventually, it's going to get a point where you're damaging your liver and it's not working anymore. So, like, and then what? Then you have then you have liver damage and no effects. So, um. This, that, that part of the transition is always, like, it's meant to be temp temporary, right? Until you can actually get the physical um, operation done, which I've already explained is um, not financially realistic. And, not, and not, it's not just not financially realistic, it's, there's, a, there's a mental health bureaucracy in Canada that's a huge pain in the ass. Um, so, um, I, I nonetheless need to adjust to the reality that um, I've been taking these drugs longer than I should, um, and that's the next step, which is uh, testicular removal. So that's a big part of what I'm doing here. Um, how can my batteries be going? I just uh, I didn't need to change before I lost. It. Okay, so um, it's ridiculously warm, above 20 degrees, 10 o'clock, and. On October 18th. It's absurd. Um, but it's nice. And uh, I may actually even get some grocery shopping done this afternoon. I don't know. Take advantage of the nice hot weather. Uh, I think I wanted to do that way back, but like I say, 
Everything, everything revolved around waking up a little bit earlier. That didn't happen, and now I'm just kind of stumbling. Um, I'm gonna be late. Um, I don't look so good, and I'm not gonna get anything done all the way back. So this is kind of, kind of a total catastrophe. We'll see what happens when I get there, anyways. So I showed up um, almost an hour late, missed the appointment, and had to rebook in November. Um, what do you want me to say? <laughs> I guess. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that I'm going to resolve to get here earlier because I could very well just, just as well end up late. So, um, I've never been on time anywhere in my life. It's not by conscious choice, just I can't. I'm really, really bad at it. Uh, it's probably the reason more than anything else that I live the way that I live because I have a hard time getting, you know, it's not just that I'm late everywhere, it's that I'm late everywhere and I don't really care. It's, it's, and there's not really much of anything that's going to make me care. Anyways, um, I missed that appointment. Uh, come back in November. Um, I'm just hoping I have enough, enough, enough testosterone suppressors to continue double dosing until I get there. I, I, I think I do. Um, then again, it's, yeah, it's what, it's the 18th today, so it's not, it's not that much further, but it's like, uh, two and a half weeks. What, do, what, what am I going to do? That's what I have to do. Um, I can't really see anybody else regarding these, this topic. So, uh, wait a minute. Go. Um, I'm going to see if I can get some toothpaste here. And then I'm just going to go home. Okay, I'm just, uh, I was trying to figure out how I'm gonna, uh, walk with toothpaste and a coffee and, a and a thing in my hand. Actually, it's kind of an obvious answer to this, isn't there? Why did I put the toothpaste in my pocket? I know, I'm really aren't I? It's hard being a genius sometimes. Uh, anyways, um, so let's talk about appointments. I'm just walking, thinking about this as I'm walking. It, it, it really is a beautiful day. Holy shit. We have no rights. We have no right to a day like this, this late in the year. We got some, we got some leaps holding anyways. We did get some cold weather. I mentioned at one point, uh, if we don't get a cold snap, we should get worried. We did get a cold snap. Not a, not a particularly cold cold snap, but it was enough to uh, maybe not set us back on any kind of path towards any meaningful norm, but um, to at least uh, make a little bit of sense um, out of our position on this globe relative to our distance to the sun. Um, and the fact that uh, the days are getting shorter and will for another what, six weeks? Is that it? No, eight, nine, yeah, ten weeks. Okay. I got excited there for a minute. Uh, actually, it's more like nine weeks. A anyways, um, no. Uh, there's remainders there, it's probably close to ten. It's October 18th, somebody do the math for me. Well, it's, it, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a couple of days short of two months. Which, uh, is what? Oh, it's a couple of days. Two months plus a couple of days. There's what, eight? And that's three and two is five. And no, it's nine. It's just barely nine weeks. Yeah. Um, I got my hair in my mouth, too. I wanted to talk to you about appointments. Um, because I'm always late for appointments. Wouldn't that be a shitty way to run a society if everybody was always late for everything all the time? If I can anarchist you, well, maybe. Um, see, the way I would want to have a doctor's office, um, an appointment at a doctor's office, would be that there kind of wouldn't be appointments, right? People would just kind of go. And I mean, maybe they would. A smart way to do it would be to um, have a public queue, 
right? So that uh, you could like check on the internet and see, okay, there's this many people at this office right now. Am I gonna get in today? Um, people would wanna probably show up early in the morning. But the idea of like like strict time slots, that's a little bit too um, a little bit too ordered for my tastes. Of course, we also have to keep in mind that um, the communist side of anarchism relies on a certain level of technological advancement, and the individualistic aspect of anarcho-communism relies on a certain concept of self-administration. Um, I should also point out that if we did live in an anarchist communist society, then I wouldn't need um, to go to a doctor to get a reference to see another doctor. I wouldn't need to go to a doctor to get a prescription to get hormones. Um, and a lot of the things that we go to see a doctor for people wouldn't go see doctors for. They would just do it. Um, or um, the technology would exist um, distributed at cost um, to uh, lessen the need for a doctor's appointment. Um, I do think that we should probably maintain some kind of concept of academic standards. There needs to be some kind of process that tells me when I see a doctor that it's a doctor. This isn't just somebody pretending to be a doctor. It's somebody that, you know... It's not Dr. Nick. Um, so yeah, uh, but um, appointments, I'm not... I think that there's uh, better ways to uh, do this than to, you know, have everybody pick a time ahead of time, and if they miss it, then they're at a lot. Um, I think that um, doctor's offices will probably operate more like clinics. Um, that's probably a better model, in my view. Um, in fact, we can make the argument that they're all doctor's offices would be clinics, so it wouldn't be like doctor-patient relationships, precisely. Or, you know, you would get to know a doctor at the clinic uh, because you're near them, but not because you have a specific relationship with them, right? So, um, you know, r records would be, well, medical records would not belong to the doctor, but to the patient. And the patient would bring their medical records with them, right? So you wouldn't have to worry about access between different groups or whatever because it would be, see, that's, that's part of the individualistic aspect of it, right? So, um, It would, it would, it would, like I say, I, I think there are models that would um, uh, approximate how this would operate, but I, I can just imagine people, you know, you're fucking anarchists, you can't even show up anywhere on time, you know. But what, what kind of crazy society are you talking about where the trains don't run on time? Um, well, that, that, that's good for you if, if you're very regimented and very strict. If, if you live more of a more of a loose kind of a kind of a lifestyle like I do, um, and, and you find schedules to be kind of oppressive, then you may actually find that you know this kind of idea of opening things up so that you can show up where you're going, kind of wherever you want. You might actually consider that to be emancipating, and you might kind of consider the society where the trains run on time to be kind of, um, uh, you know, all the regimentation and order is, is very boring uh, and uh, onerous on you as an individual um, to meet the uh, expectations that are pushed down upon you. So, I know, I, I, I get what you're going to say, but it's more like I'm just going to... I'm just gonna poke a stick in your eye and I'm just gonna be like, you know. Yeah, I'm late all the time and I don't give a fuck. 
and I think that society should be altered for my lifestyle. I don't think I should alter my lifestyle for society. And if the situation was flipped around, you might very well say the same thing, right? It's just a question of, it's just a question of democracy, really, right? The idea of an ordered system is not inherently superior. Um, I, I don't even, well, I think it would be um, uh, disingenuous to suggest that the, that the society that we exist within is ordered by democracy so much as it's ordered by capital, right? Perhaps if we had more democracy, we would have less scheduling. Or maybe that's just a, you know, something that, that comes with the ebbs and flows with time, right? Maybe in the future, we will desire a less regimented society, where we have more freedom to abolish time. And this is something else that I've, that I've stated repeatedly as well. Nothing is more oppressive than time. <clears throat> Anyways, I think I've ranted enough about that. Um, I've got my point across. Um, You might legitimately not like my projections, or you just might be afraid of change. And if you think about it, you might realize that you might prefer it. I don't know. I know that um, if there's ever more of us, then we'll win. Right now, I'm the one stuck, right? Yeah. No, but this is true, and I think it may be perhaps worth noting. Um, I went to this doctor for three reasons today, and I actually don't think I should have to go to this doctor for any of these reasons. If I want a blood test, I should be able to go to the place where they do blood tests, fill out a form, uh, do the requests there. Um, if I want a, well, if I want to go see a, a I don't know who, who would deal with the, uh, uh, the, the testicle removal. Um, what are the names of the ones? Uh, it'll be a prostate guy. Or, or oh, it'll probably be a dude, um, just by the nature of it. Um, but I should be able just to go to see that doctor. And... Uh, Like with the MRI scans, I should go see the doctor there and then go see the other doctor, right? But on top of that, like, I shouldn't have to go see a doctor to get hormones. I should be able to just go to the store and get an etc., right? I, I'm going to see doctors all the time, but frankly, I don't... Like, a lot of the reasons that I'm going are unnecessary. It's just a lot of... I don't want to use the word regulation because I'm not opposed to regulation if regulation isn't a benefit of people. But this is bureaucracy. It's not like making me go from one doctor to another is not in my benefit. That's in the benefit of the doctor so the doctors get paid, right? Regulations don't always work in favor of you know consumers or patients or whatever the uh, receiver of the service is. Regulations often work in favor of the corporations. Uh, or, or the providers of, of things, right? And that's the situation that I'm running up against with this, right? So, um, I mean, hey, I, I, I can complain all I want, but remember, I'm not paying a dime for it, right? So, yeah. But yeah, this is, it's, it's a good point, right? I'm late, I can't show up. You know, I'm no good anarchist. Can't, can't show up at anything on time. Frankly, I don't, I don't really, not, not only do I think I should show up to this whenever I want, <laughs> kind of thing, and just see somebody, I also kind of don't think that I should really have to do this at all. I should just go direct, right? The doctor in this concept, in this circumstance is really acting as a middle person um, in multiple contexts. That's how it is, right? Okay, I'm back, it's noon, clothes are off, um, and I need to absolutely prioritize doing all the loose ends that I've been trying to get done for like a week. 
Um, the loose ends keep piling up, so uh, now I have some ultra reality stuff to do. Um, there was a corn record released 20 years ago that I actually kind of liked for a bit. Um, the first two, the third one, I could never get into the third one, but I did actually enjoy the second one quite a bit. Um, you have to be of a certain... I guess if you're... You know what, even if you're like two years younger than me, you probably wouldn't get it. But like, the, the, there was that period from about, I guess about 90, 94 to 96 when Korn was pretty, pretty much the freak band. And I guess it was, I think it was actually, if I remember correctly, what happened was that Lump Biscuit got big first. And then Korn kind of, kind of, um, in terms of commercial success, followed them afterwards. And... It was after that that everything went, you know. That whole, like, new metal thing blew up. But, in fact, the first two, and in fact, maybe even the first... Even even all the way through, Korn was always a little bit different, right? Korn was never socially regressive. Like, the lyrics for Limp Biscuit and all the things that followed after that, you know, Kid Rock or whatever else, the lyrics were just terrible. Korn's lyrics always had kind of a... Um, well, Korn were a punk band more than anything else, right? And no, you have to... I, I know Korn kind of gets the scorn or the, the, the bulk of it, but they were they were different and they should be treated a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, 20 years ago I did... I I dug Life is Peachy. I'm not going to deny that. I dug the first record too. It was the third record. I, I, I just... I had grown out of it by the time the third record came out, which I guess was 98. I think so, yeah. I tried to listen to it a couple times. It just... It never... I'd grown out of it, and I never came back to it. But 96, Life is Peachy, I dug that, and let's, uh, I'm going to have to do a write-up for that. Um, but yeah, i got to get the cleaning done. Um, I'm awake. I'm alert. It's time to do it. <coughs> so should Clinton try to run up the vote in the electoral landslide? I don't, I don't think this question makes sense. Wouldn't she be doing everything she can to win? Anyways? I ultimately think that the question is based on the premise that you can just buy votes with advertising. Right? Asking, you know, the question, should she try to run up the score on the Electoral College last slide, is the same question as asking, should she spend lots of money on advertising in these states? And I don't, I, I don't think that there's a connection there that's as strong as people are suggesting. I'm not buying into the premise. We saw in Canada in the last election, we saw the Conservatives spend many times more on advertising. And all that it ended up doing in the end was backfiring on them. I really don't think that money buys votes. And this is a big part of the reason why I'm not um, as attached to this kind of um, uh, uh, kind of kind of grassroots conservatism that's all about taking money out of politics. I, I I don't really have an attachment to this. I mean, it's, yes, there's this sort of ideological perspective, right? This idea that money should get out of politics as a right wing idea. I know you might be confused, but that's a, that's that's conservatism, right? <laughs> that's a right-wing idea. But I, I, I don't actually think that you can do that. I don't think that people are that malleable. I don't think that winning elections is as easy as just going out and buying them. I think that you actually have to convince people. And that convincing people is hard. If she's competitive in Arizona and Texas and Georgia as it is then you need to figure out what has brought us to this not entirely unexpected point. It looks like she's probably going to win Arizona. Georgia's going to be pretty close, and I think Texas is still... You know, it's it's not out of... It's in play. It's not out of reach, but... Like, the, the whole thing's going to have to fall down to get Texas. But... She, I'm not going to be surprised if she wins Arizona. I might be a little bit surprised if she wins Georgia. 
she's not advertising there. So obviously, the reasons that she's competitive in these states don't have anything to do with advertising. They have to do with policies. They have to do with the statements coming from the candidates. So let's figure out what it is that's brought her there, right? If you're going to ask the question, should she make a play in these areas? What that means is figuring out why she's competitive in these areas and trying to exploit that, right? It's not ad buys, clearly. And those ad buys could backfire. They say ad buys. Those ad buys could backfire if they hit the wrong message. So consider the scenario that she could squeak out Arizona through a big swing with suburban women, which is what it appears is happening. So then she puts out an ad buy, and all they see on their TV screen is tax increase. Because these suburban women aren't voting for Hillary Clinton and what Hillary Clinton is promoting, so much as they're voting against Donald Trump. But then when you remind them what Hillary Clinton is about, it reminds them that they're not really in support of that. So they don't vote for her. Oops. Now, I, I understand that if she did do that by in Arizona, she'd probably target women. She, she'd probably reinforce the point. But you get what I'm trying to say here about how it might backfire. If they're voting against the candidate, then you kind of want to get out of the way. You don't want to get in the way. You want to just you know step back and let it happen sort of thing. Interfering is just going to screw it up. And what's she going to do in Georgia? If she wins Georgia, it's because of Gary Johnson. Okay, And I know people are pushing back against that, but Gary Johnson is running at over 10% in Georgia. Are you saying that Clinton would win by 15 points if it wasn't for Gary Johnson? I mean, let's be realistic. Let's get real here. Okay? Gary Johnson is splitting the vote in Georgia. And she might win because of it. So what is she going to do to make a play in Georgia? Is she going to run ads for Gary Johnson? Now, that said, I think there's some logic in trying to maybe push something down nationally, right? So if you can get, like, national advertising on national TV networks. I don't even know if that's possible. I would think if it is possible, you'd hear more about it. But everybody's focusing always on targeting ads, right? I, I, that's maybe not the best strategy here. Because the whole, the bottom's falling out, right? The whole thing's collapsing. And if the whole thing's collapsing, why not try to push down from the top? That would make sense. But otherwise, the reality is that what she's doing is working. And if what you're doing is working, then why would you want to change it? Why fix it if it's not broken, right? In fact, why fix it if it's working? It's 11 o'clock at night, and that was another day spent sitting in front of my, my machine editing. It's getting to the point where it's starting to piss me off. Um, so what can I do to spend less time editing? Well... I can spend less time um, ranting. That's probably um, the big thing. Um, I think that the time-consuming thing um, it has been, at least for today and probably for the last little while, has been um, the Reacts session. Um, the Reacts section was initially meant to be about um, reacting to YouTube videos. Um, and it was supposed to be just like, you know, get something to eat, like I'm going to get something to eat right now, sit down, start ranting about something on the TV, you know. Um, there's kind of a backstory to this, which is that I used to run a, a politics site um, using my, one, of my, one of my previous pseudonyms, um, which I'm going to um, uh, enunciate as Zhvashkvola. Um, it was just D, and then a string of random letters, and then A. Um... It, it was mostly, like, if you look at the keyboard, there's D and there's like F, G, H, and, it's, and it was just, you know, 
it was up that stream, right? So I press D and then, you know, mash my fingers across and then end with A, which is at the end of this, the end of that row. The second row. Um, and when I moved here, I consciously made the choice that I'm going to stop this so that I can focus on the music. And I did that for a good long while and I was successful with it. But when I came back to the vlog, um, and it was... What it was, was that it was the um, election. That's when I kind of lost it. Um, I, need, I needed an outlet to rant about the election. Um, well, and in fact, there was the, the, the spot before it, right? But I did actually, well... Okay, it's not true that I got, I got work done during the Canadian election because that was actually the period where um, the interference kind of hit me, right? In fact, I probably, and I've said this repeatedly, is that I almost certainly would not have spent as much time ranting about the Canadian election had the interference not hit. So, I had difficulty recording, I got lost in the Canadian election, and then Bernie Sanders is interesting, and then the polling, and I need... I've, like I say, I've had this problem in the past repeatedly, where I am not productive because I get stuck on my soapbox. I just start ranting. You know, in, in the past it was, you know, I was reading up on geopolitics. I had this huge Facebook feed with like thousands of posts coming in a day. And I was reading hundreds of articles a day and commenting and posting. And I, I got obsessed with it and I got lost with it. And I just stopped it. One of the things that we did when I quit smoking back in uh, February was I spent like weeks archiving this which meant taking hundreds and, well, thousands and thousands of links off of this Facebook page and putting it into this Word document, which is now past 5,700 pages. 5,700 pages of rambling, of ranting, of just going off. Um, and there's about a good thousand of it are related to the American election. And I'm not exaggerating. It was like a thousand pages of ranting about the election. I could release it as a novel. Just, you know, put the name Thomas Pynchon on the front of it. No, like, honestly, seriously. Maybe I could, like, mess with it and turn it into a dialogue, a platonic dialogue. That would actually be a lot of fun, but I don't have time to do it right now. Um, my point is just that I have a habit of this, and I have to get it under control. Um, I don't want to say I'm not going to say anything else about the election, it's not even the ranting that's pissing me off. It's the fact that I'm spending all of this time ranting, and then I'm reciting, and then I'm editing, and I'm losing all of my time on this. Um, this wasn't supposed to be what this was going to be like. The vlog was supposed to be marketing for the music, not a platform to rant about an election in a different country. Um, and this isn't the first time I've kind of wanted to pull back, right? Initially, it was just like, I'm interested in Sanders, and then it was, you know... I'm not interested in Sanders anymore, and I don't care about Clinton and Trump. And then it was, it became a math problem, right? And I like math problems. Um, so I got stuck in the math problem, but I think that the math problem is solved, or at the very least, the answer doesn't matter, and I need to just get out, right? So um, if it's not obvious, it looks like Hillary Clinton's going to win the election. She has, you know, if you want, you want to, you want to, you want to, use, to do the two to the X. What is that? She's got a, a, over a hundred possibilities, okay? Where she could win. Trump has. I, I'm having difficulty coming up with one path for Trump. Like, like what? Like, like realistic paths? I can't even find one. I've been saying for a while that I think his best, his most realistic shot, and I, I I'm honestly saying this. I, I'm not exaggerating. I think that his most realistic chance of winning the election is to split the vote in New Mexico. So, so long... <laughs> so long as... Hillary Clinton wins New Mexico, which... nobody even thinks that this is debatable, okay? But if Gary Johnson... Donald Trump's only chance of winning this election, in my analysis, rests on Gary Johnson winning in New Mexico. And, I don't know, ask Nate Silver, what was the probability of, 
uh, of Gary Johnson winning New Mexico. Actually, don't ask him because he probably hasn't sat down and worked at it. It's probably actually higher than the combined. Well, of course it is, right? <laughs> of course it would be, but 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 it, it, it's obscure. Okay, it's very obscure, um, and this is what um, he needs. So it's over. It's been over the whole time. I don't know why I. I was the math problem wasn't even about who's going to win. It's going to be about how things are distributed, and you know I got. Uh, I got trapped in something I shouldn't have got trapped in. And like I say, it's not even its not even that is bothering me, right? It's not the time I've spent doing it that's bothering me. It's all of the time I'm spending reciting my rants, editing them, putting them all up, and then uploading them. This isn't, um, this is not productive. Um, I, I, I need to make that, you know, cut off point. This is not productive. Let's go, okay? Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll rant some more, but when I do do, do these rants like that, it's going to be more like philosophical type things, right? Which is what I wanted it to be in the first place. If you look at the reacts back in February before I got lost in this, um, or January, well, the very first one was uh, I was making fun of Hillary Clinton doing Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs is the wind beneath her wings. Um, but, well, she's, no, she said it was the wind beneath her wings, and I pointed out that, that therefore... Actually, I think that what just happened there is very appropriate. <laughs> Let's just end it. Um, it looks like I'm going to lose today as well. This is going to be a wasted day. Um, let's some resolve so that we don't have any more days like this. Let's resolve to be more productive and uh, let it go. Right now I'm hungry. So Marco Rubio is promising that there is not a 67 county conspiracy to read the election. But what if it was 66 counties? Might there be a 66 county conspiracy to read the election? In fact, what if there actually are 66 counties and Satan's little hover here is trying to obfuscate from the numer numerology? Yeah, 66, huh? Well, what do you think there's 66 counties in the first place if there's not a 66 county conspiracy? We can have some fun with this, right? But in actual fact, let's take a look at what he's saying a little bit more carefully. I promise you there is not a 67 county conspiracy to rig the election. Well, I promise you there isn't either. But you don't need to rig 67 counties to rig the election. You really just need to rig the ones you're close in. Or the ones you're way ahead in. Right? If you're going to win by 20 points anyways, then who's going to doubt that you won by 30 points? In that county. Ah, but this is probably a part of the conspiracy. This insistence that in order for there to be a conspiracy, it has to be absolute. When Marco comes up here and tries to convince you that there's not a conspiracy by telling you that they would have to rig every county, is that not a distraction? Or is he not obfuscating at that point? Because clearly we know that you only need to rig a couple of counties, not all of them. Why is he trying to confuse you? It's just typical politician speak. To throw you off. The bravado of 67 counties and unanimous corruption quite effectively distracts from the reality that all you really need to rig is like six. Two or three even. If you have the right attorney general in place. Which is why he won't say it. Imagine if he had said this. I highly doubt that there is a conspiracy to rig six out of 67 counties. That's crazy. It's not as effective, is it? How about this? I highly doubt there's a conspiracy to rig three out of 67 counties. That's insanity. Is it? Really? Doesn't sound so crazy anymore, does it? Because that's all you need. 
Not Cuba, Marco. We rig it to 55%, not to 95%. Throws them off.